<laughs> we need we need some masala so now the newer designs which we call the global design uh, is uh, yeah thanks the newer design is a roof is a, is one configuration one line it's that's obviously cheaper has a greenhouse here in this building see so has a greenhouse but it has also got a greenhouse here glass and uh, so what that means we're into this thing now we call internal space because out here it could be minus 30 in this first greenhouse which you'll see at corner cottage and the phoenix and even in the the global models now it could get down to 45 or 50 in here. But this is for plants, not people. But people do hang out in there a lot of the time. Then the internal space, this becomes a buffer zone for between the outside space and the internal space. People hang out in here, and uh, they are not subject. You know, this buffer zone protects them. It's like a, and you, you rationalize it, or, you know, it's square footage. You have to pay for it. But it grows plants, it treats sewage, creates more roof space to catch more water, and becomes a buffer zone between you and the outside. We even have some where we have gone to one more outside. Uh, so there's two buffer zones if in extreme situations. The Phoenix illustrates that a little. We, do, we play with all kinds of extremes here. This is a good place to develop these kind of buildings because uh, we do get seriously cold here sub-zero, you know, if you're talking Fahrenheit, 30, 35 below. And we get up to 105, so we have to make the buildings cool and warm. But mass is what does that. So now we do one, so we have taken just this simple thing and, and made it uh, a little more uh, fine-tuned with all of this, quite a bit more actually. Of course, there's super insulation on the roof. And uh, it turns out that these ventilation skylights are, uh, in the winter, that's, that's a cold draft coming down from there, no matter how uh, tight you seal it. And so we're trying to buy every degree that we can. So we took them out and we put them in the greenhouse now. And you'll see this on, uh, Kirsten will point this out on the tour, but look for it. Uh, now we have tubes coming through the burial that, there, this is called a con this is this has just been evolved in the last year or so and in, in getting better. What happens is in this greenhouse it gets intensely hot up here, and that heat wants to rise, and we have a skylight to let it rise to let it escape. And the hotter it is, the faster it goes out of there. Well, when it leaves, you can't have a vacuum, so it's going to create a suction, and it, what it does then is it sucks air through. Uh, these tubes, and these tubes are buried in the burial. So we have, it's, it's almost, uh, I think the physicists call it a convection engine, convection driven uh, air movement. No fans, nothing, but there is air moving. And uh, we just did one up in Miles City, Montana. It was 105, it didn't have the double greenhouse, the third greenhouse had the double. It was 105 outside, 71 inside. And that would have made the law happy. Uh, and you know, people would sit around this at lunch because they're coming in from working outside in 105 degrees and sit around these tubes and put their bottles of water in them and all kinds of stuff. You could see it was working. And this is with no fuel. So, so now we've taken this configuration that we got busted for uh, a decade or so ago and taking it further, further, uh, removed the heat loss of the skylight, created even better ventilation, and uh, uh, done one more thing. We, uh, we do now what we call a thermal wrap, and you can see this, I think, uh, we've got one under construction called the Global, across from Corner Cottage. Thermal wrap is we take rigid insulation and go out another three feet from the tires. And so now, this, we have trapped more actual earth mass to 
work with the tires. The tires become the structure and mass, but we're adding another three feet to that mass by isolating it away from the cooler earth. Because see, that it's the cool earth that, cool, that cools off this air. This air goes through the earth and it cools it off. Well, in the wintertime, we plug these and the frigid air goes down into the earth three or four feet, but it can't get through this insulation. So now there's close to six, seven feet of mass that belongs to this space. And the way that works in, uh, is it's an actual, I do observe laws of physics. I don't really observe other laws, but uh, uh, laws of physics I call unarguable. And uh, you can, you know, you, you can't argue with the sun. It's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, but anyway, a law of physics is that heat moves to the cooler place, uh, not vice versa. So what happens is uh, when, when uh, warm air in the winter, say, is coming through these greenhouses, it heats up this air space. Well, this mass space is cooler. So the heat leaks into it, and it just stores it because it's trapped by this insulation, this thermal wrap. So this warm air in this space leaks into the walls due to the law of physics. Well, what happens then is, uh, and people have, that stay in, we have these nightly rentals that uh, we use. Uh, that's kind of a, it was an accident because see the early days, I, th I think Kirsten probably showed you some of the early buildings looked like they landed and whatever and uh, not marketable buildings. So I had a bunch of these unmarketable buildings. People wanted to look at them stay in them, but they didn't, certainly didn't want to buy them. And if they did want to buy them, the banks wouldn't even consider it anyway. So I hear I am stuck with mortgage payments on a bunch of weird buildings. And I had to, so I started renting them at night to people. And that, that turned out to save me from going bankrupt, basically. And uh, so now we do it. But uh, we do it now to, uh, to show people, to give people the experience of living in these because a lot of people think that if you're going to be sustainable or green or whatever, you're, you're in a teepee out in the desert, you know. You're, but they don't realize that you can have flat screen TV and high speed internet and all kinds of goodies. Normal life. So anyway, the people that stay in the nightly rentals uh, would come to us and say, what the hell's going on? Uh, we go to bed, it's winter. We went to bed and put blankets on and, you know, the, the sun went down and the airspace got cool. So, you know, we went to bed and put blankets on. Not, not, it wasn't cold, but it was cool enough in the winter to have a blanket on. And at midnight or one o'clock, they wake up and kick the blankets off. And it said, it's like a heating system is coming on. Are you got something you're not telling us or whatever? Uh, and so what's going on is, and, and they've told us that in many ways. I mean, that's, they've come and actually said, what is going on? It felt like a heating system was coming on at midnight. So what is in fact going on is the sun goes down, the air space in this internal space, uh, the warmth uh, cools down, you know, from heat loss through both glass spaces. It's slowed down by this, but it still cools off. And eventually in the middle of the night, this space gets down to maybe 69 degrees or something. Well, the walls are all stored up at maybe 73, and it's just a few degrees different, but that's what it takes. Maybe this even gets the air, space, the air temperature could even drop to 67 or whatever. It's still lower than the temperature in the walls, so because of physics, the air starts leaking out. It's just like turning a furnace on. You, the, the minute this airspace gets lower in temperature than the massive wall, and there's a tremendous amount of mass in a seven-foot thick wall all the way around your building, the heat starts leaking out and it just heats up the space. And uh, so that just keeps on going off and on, natural phenomena. Uh, we keep, you know, so you can see from this building here uh, how we, you know, we had a handle on it in the very beginning decades ago, but how it's refined in many, many ways now. So we can keep the space in something like the corner cottage at like 73 degrees. Uh, and I, I would say between 70 and 75 is where it, largely where it hangs. It may get up a little higher, a little lower, but it's close enough now, much closer than this building. And so that 
has become, uh, see this tube thing, we uh, just, we've been doing it in the tropics. Uh, we did it in uh, uh, India, in Hawaii, uh, Nicaragua. Uh, we did it, we started doing it in the tropics. We weren't even doing it here. Uh, but we, we started doing it uh, just to cool off in the summers here. And we started doing it here really to create ventilation without heat loss in the winter. And then we started seeing that totally cool air was just moving through the building. So this refinement, is this is really in the last year, year and a half. Uh, the thermal mass has been around for six or four or five years, something like that. Uh, I mean, the thermal wrap, the thermal mass was there from the beginning. The buffer zones, uh, they happened in the last four or five years. Uh, so when you apply all of these tricks, then you end up with a building that is just going to sit there without fuel and take care of you. And, in, and we, we have gone through many models. They, the, uh, you know, the airship designs, they have what we call the packaged, and the package with the double greenhouse then evolved, which is close to what I'm talking about now. The modular was the circles and the U's. And then the hybrid was a combination of both. And of course, custom is custom. We can't, no matter how much money you have, we could, I mean, we can make a custom building that's all beautiful and, and looks a lot more interesting, but we can't really make a building that works better than this one that we call the global model now. And now this one is uh, what we use in the tropics because it stays cool and it's what we use in the, winter, in the extreme cold. We, we do take it a little further. Uh, if it's super extreme cold, why we add another greenhouse? And it's easy to justify this because, like I said, the, the second greenhouse is, uh, and the third is treating sewage, which I go into tomorrow. Uh, it's uh, growing food and... Uh, Catch, creating more roof space to catch more water, creating the convection engine to cross the ventilation, and becoming a buffer zone. It's like, you know, it's like tires. It's like there's six reasons to do this, just like there's six reasons to use tires. Uh, there's, it's not just one thing, and that justifies it. Because people are, you know, when, when you're paying these costs in this area, $205 a square foot, that's about what a, a good economical but good conventional building costs here. Adobe's in Santa Fe cost three, three fifty a square foot. Uh, and these are better. Uh, so it's in the price range with regular buildings in, in the developed world. Uh, and in many places it's, uh, it's allowed in the developed world. Uh, but it's, a, it's, it's one configuration now that we're using everywhere. Uh, we, we can, you know, these buildings then obviously look in floor plan. I think uh, they've got drawings here of the studio version, the one-bedroom version, the two-bedroom version. You'll be on the tour, you'll be able to see a one-bedroom version of this. You'll be able to see a three-bedroom version of this uh, under construction. You'll be able to see the, the uh, out-of-date version of this, which is Corner Cottage. Uh, which is really a package design with a double greenhouse. And uh, see, we, we evolved the package design uh, more than a decade ago uh, just to, to, to simplify this because what we found out was once we started building these kind of spaces was still, and it's still true today, the most uh, prominent selling home in the United States is those manufactured houses that they bring in on a truck, set them up on concrete blocks, hook them up to all the utilities, and they start falling apart immediately. And they pump fuel and into them and water and sewage out of them. And, but they, they are easily available to people. And we then, you know, over a decade ago, started realizing that we have to make this available to people. It can't be more expensive. It can't be, uh, uh, it has to be something that's even more available to people. Because 
uh, money talks, really, and we're trying to evolve beyond that uh, in a lot of ways. I'll get into that, but uh, if you're playing with an idea that has to be purchased, then it's got to be the same price as the, th the other things on the market. <laughs>